Okay, to start our uh, trig unit here, let's take a look at how to measure and label angles. Okay, so every angle has its standard position and um, its initial side. This is kind of like the starting point. So if I draw up my number line here, okay, we usually use our starting point as zero right here. Our starting point for our angles also have uh, use this initial side as as their zero. Okay, so the vertex at the origin and that's its, its zero part. If I start measuring my angle counterclockwise like this, that means I'm going to have a positive angle. Just like on my number line, if I move to the right, it's going to be positive, right? Positive numbers. Okay. If I move in a clockwise direction, that's going to be a negative angle. Just like over here. If I move to the left on my number line, it's going to be negative. Okay. Um, there's a couple of ways that we label our angles. One was with uh, theta, beta, or alpha. These are just Greek letters that we use to name our angles. So let's call this one in here theta, and we'll call this one in here alpha. And we're going to uh, uh, measure our two angles, or our angles, in two ways. We're going to measure them in degrees or radians. Let's take a quick look at that. Okay. So I think everybody, when they look at a circle, has an idea that in a full circle I've got 360 degrees. Okay, um, another way to measure an angle is in radians. Okay, so it's it's we're still measuring the same thing. We're still measuring an angle. It's just with a different type of unit. Same way you can measure um, a distance with either a, a feet or in meters. Okay, you're still measuring the distance. Same thing when we measure angles, we can measure them with in radians or degrees. Okay, so um, just a quick uh, definition of what a radian is. Basically, if a radian is, if I take the radius of my circle and I stretch it around the outside of the circle, one of these radiuses stretched around the outside of my circle is going to be one radian. Okay, so for example, this distance for this angle, AOB, okay, if I start working my way around this circle, and let's say this radius, if I have it like a piece of string, and I stretch that exact distance around the outside of my circle here, say it gets me to there, that's going to be one radian. Okay, one radius here, that same distance over here, whoops, that same distance over here is one radian. Okay, so this whole arc right here might be one radian that gets me to there, plus another, let's say, a third of a radian. So here, theta might equal 1.3, or 1.33, I guess. Let's call it a third. Radians. Okay. And by the looks of it, that same angle in degrees would be, I don't know, it's a little less than 90, it looks like, so about 85 degrees. Okay. So that's uh, both our both ways that we can measure an angle in radians and in degrees. Okay, so let's take a look at a couple of examples here. So in order to measure something in radians, okay, you're just basically going to take your arc length and you're going to divide it by how long your radius is. So here it looks like my arc length, this distance right here, is 5. And my radius is 2. So my angle in here is going to be 5 over 2 radians. How many radiuses is it going to take? It's going to take 1. So this distance is going to cover 1, 2, and then 1 half of those is going to fill up the rest. So 5 over 2 radians. Okay. And just the definition basically here, if my length, if my arc length S is equal to 1 radius, then my angle is going to be r over r, which is equal to 1 radian. Okay? And with radians, like with degrees, you always, uh, when you measure in degrees, you always put like a little degree sign, right? So if this is, let's say, I don't know, uh, it looks like about 130, maybe 140 degrees, okay? You always put this little degree sign up here. With radians, you don't do that, okay? With radians, you just put the number, 5 over 2. You don't have a unit. So radians do not require.
require a, oh, I'm going to get in trouble here, a unit afterwards. Okay, so let's try and convert. We know that radians, we can measure angles in radians and degrees, but let's figure out how we can go ahead and change them from one to the other. So the best way here probably is to use a little bit of a ratio. So we all know that in a circle, one revolution of a circle okay, is 360 degrees. Okay. And equals the same way in another measurement, okay, 2 pi. So 360 degrees and 2 pi are two different ways to show the angle around a circle. Okay. So now we want to be able to convert degrees to radians and radians to degrees. So let's try and convert a degree to a radian first. Let's try 45 degrees. Okay. And we're going to do that with a ratio. So we know that 360 degrees is the same as 2 pi. And we want to know how 45 degrees converts to radians. We call that x. Okay. So it looks like I'm going to multiply. Well, first let's do this. Let's simplify the top and the bottom here. Looks like I can make that 180 on top over pi. Okay, so I'm going to end up here with 180x is equal to 45 pi. And now I'm going to divide both sides by 180. And it looks like that's going to give me x is equal to pi over 4. So it looks, looks like what we really did here was we just multiplied pi over 180 by my 45. And that gave me my angle. So from degrees to, to radians, I'm going to multiply pi over 180. So let's try one from radians to degrees now. So let's try 3 pi. So we're going to change that to degrees. So 360 degrees we know is like 2 pi, or rather 180 over pi is, is like uh, are the same. And so I want to know how many degrees 3 pi is. Okay, so we'll do solve our equation here. So we're going to get 3 pi times 180 is equal to pi times x. And I'll divide both sides by pi. And it looks like x is going to equal to. And look what happened here. It looks like all we really did to our 3 pi was multiply by 180 over pi. So the pi's cancel out here. And I'm going to get 540 degrees. So radians to degrees, a nice little rule to think of there is to multiply by 180 over pi. Okay, so let's see if we can give this a go on a couple of these. Uh, let's try minus 225. So minus 225 degrees. So I'm going from degrees to radians. So I'm going to multiply that by pi over 180. Now let's see here. Uh, well, 180 is like 1, 2, 3, 4 45s, and 225 is one more 45. So it looks like that's going to be minus 5 45 pi over 4. Okay. There's three more for you guys to give it a try. So just remember degrees to radians, you're multiplying by um, pi over 180. And from radians to degrees, you're going to multiply by 180 over pi. Okay, so you guys give those ones a go. Okay, so let's take a look here at what's coming next. Okay, well, let's just look at each of the quadrantal yeah. angles. Okay, so in degrees, this is 0 or 360. So these are just the angles that lie along uh, each of the axes. Okay, so if I go one degree up, looks like that's going to be 90 degrees. One axis up, this is a 90 degree angle. This is going to be 180 degrees. This is going to be 270. Okay. 
So in terms of pi here, and then we go all the way around, it's going to be 360. So in terms of pi, again, we start at 0 radian here. Okay, We know that this one over here is pi radians. So halfway in between has got to be pi over 2. Okay, And this one down here, if this is pi, and we know that this one all the way around is 2 pi, then this one here must be 3 pi over 2. Okay. Okay, now that we've got those quadrantal angles, we can use them as a frame of reference to sketch our other angles. Okay, so if I go to sketch a 120 degree angle, draw out my axis here. Okay, and I know to draw my terminal arm. Okay, so if this is 120, I know this is 90 and this is 180. I can kind of count back 60 from 180. Put my terminal arm there. So I'm starting here at my zero, going clockwise, or sorry, counterclockwise, because I've got a positive 120 degree angle, and there it is. Okay. With this next one, it's minus 45, so I'm going to draw my terminal angle, or my terminal arm, down here, because if this is zero, and I want to go backwards 45 degrees in a negative direction, draw it in there, so... I connect my arrow to my terminal arm. That's my minus 45, whoops, minus 45 degree angle. Okay, so I'm going to leave, uh, oh, let's do one with radians. Okay, so 5 pi over 4 radians. Now, where is that angle? Let's take a look here. Squeeze it a little easier. Okay, so this is counting in pi over 4. And we looked up top there, and if you can remember, 45 degrees is pi over 4. Okay? Let's do a couple more of these. 30 degrees is pi over 6. 60 degrees is pi over 3. Okay? And we also know that 90 degrees is pi over 2. So if we know that these single kind of single measures for these different uh, types of common angles, okay, we can kind of use them to map out um, multiples of them. Okay, so here we go. If I've got 5 pi over 4, well, I know that 4 pi over 4 is the same as pi. So 4 pi over 4 is the same as 1 pi, and we know that that is at 180. So here's 4 pi over 4 is going to get me to here. Okay, and I want one more. 45 degree angle from there. So I'm going to draw my terminal arm right there, and that gives me a 5 pi over 4 angle, right? Because every, well, every quadrant, how many pi over 4 are we going to have? We're going to have 2, right? So 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4. I'll leave that last one for you as a as an example. All right. So let's see what else we got here. I think it's just some more exercises which you guys can probably handle quite nicely on your own. Give the quadrants for each angle. Yep. I bet you we can do this. Okay. So if I see this, seven pi over twelve. Now we know pi over six we set up top was was thirty degrees. Um, but even if we didn't know that, okay, we can look and say, if this was 6 pi over 12, that would be the same as pi over 2, okay? And we know that pi over 2 is the same as 90 degrees, up there. So 7 pi, or 7 pi over 12, pi over 2 is the same as 6 pi over 12. So positive 7 pi over 2, it must be in quadrant 2. Okay, yeah, I think we got time for one last one here. So let's take a look at this one, minus uh, 235. Okay, so just have to remember we're going in this direction. So that to there is going to get me minus 180. And we know if we keep going to here, that's going to give me minus 270. That's another 90. So 230, minus 235 must be in quadrant 2 as well. That should set you up. You try the rest of those and uh, for homework, and we'll see you next time. Bye.